Good morning, YouTube family. Good afternoon and good evening, wherever you might be. We had a visitor from Kenya last week. Hope you're back today. So they were in the evening. It was nighttime there. So that's why I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, because I'm not sure where you are, but I'm so glad that you're here and joining us today. The, the topic today, you know, it had me going and for so many reasons, and I'm kind of excited to talk about it today. But it's good to see you guys. Hi, Obi, and hi, John. Good to see you. Oh, man. Let me see. Oh, I guess you guys had been talking a little bit earlier. That's cool. Oh, hey, Mike. Good to see you. <laughs> Mike says, uh, hardly ever in my experience with him, because the question of the day is, when do narcissists tell the truth, right? When are they telling the truth? And how do we know? How do we know when they're telling the truth? And the reason for that is because they lie so much and they live in this fantasy world. Ah, well, we're going to get to that topic in just a minute. But today, guess what? I'm making Brussels sprouts because at the beginning of all this house arrest or whatever it is, stay home orders, um, I went out and bought a bunch of groceries and we've had these Brussels sprouts in the fridge for a couple of weeks. <laughs> and they still look great. So I was like, well, you know what? I better start cooking them. So you're in for a treat today. It's a, a certain way that I cook them. It's so simple and easy. I think there's what, three or four ingredients, including the Brussels sprouts. <laughs> but my husband loves it. And he used to, oh, he couldn't stand them, you know, his whole life, right? Because the way they were cooked were mushy and just horrible. So today they're going to be crisp and tasty and flavorful. Ah, oh, it's so good. So I'm going to get started on that. But First, I'm going to get myself a cup of coffee. So if you guys want to do that, that would be great. Get yourself a cup of coffee or um, a tea or whatever beverage. Oh, guess what? That reminds me. I don't know if I can show you this bottle. because it's, I reuse glass bottles that I buy, um, you know, drinks from. And I make, <laughs> I make my own infused alcohol. Yes. So I bought some... Um, uh, generic vodka that I like uh, and I like it. it's from Costco like from, of all places oh, no wait is it Costco or Sam's Club Ooh, it's Sam's Club sorry I bought this vodka it's a um, it's their members mark uh, brand and what I do is when I have fruit and especially pineapple I'll show you that when I have pineapple and I uh, slice them up I like to slice them nice and thin but I will use, I will save a portion of it and cut them chunky like this and fill the bottle with pineapple. So after I fill the bottle up to, you know, about there with pineapple and I kind of shake it a little bit so that it's not, you know, I don't know that it's so it's stacked well. Uh oh, I hope I don't get in trouble for showing you anything. But um, after I do that, then I all you do is you fill it till it's covered. I don't know if you can tell that, but it's covered all the way up to the top with alcohol and I bet you can do it with rum tequila whatever you want to do I do I do it with vodka because we happen to have a bunch of vodka on hand and it is a delicious so uh, we had left some in the refrigerator for months oh my gosh I left I made it back I want to say probably around Christmas time um, not this one this one I just made yesterday but I made one about around Christmas time and I think a week or two afterwards, we tried it and it tastes very strong still of vodka. And of course, back then I was using a different vodka, so it wasn't great. Um, and then I recently, or my husband went through our fridge and he's like, hey, what's this bottle? And he opened it up and it was the infused uh, vodka infused with pineapple. And he poured us a couple of drinks, um, uh, you know, in shot glasses and we just, we're sipping it and it was so delicious. It completely tastes like pineapple. It was sweet. Um, and of course there was alcohol. <laughs> so we had a nice evening. So I just wanted to share that with you. If you wanna make something like that, you know, go for it. There's nothing that tells you you can't. If you have berries, I would do that. Of course, it'll turn your drink, uh, the, the color of the berry. So be prepared for that. But I bet that would taste really good too. Um, but I think berries kind of break down faster, especially strawberries. Uh, so I don't know. You may give that a try, but then you would have to drink it a little bit sooner than three months down the road. 
All right, you guys, I'm going to get myself a, um, well, let me see. I'm going to get myself a coffee, but I want to see what you guys are saying. Uh, yeah, Mike says they also don't practice what they preach. All I ever, wait, is be good now from people who done my, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what that means. Maybe your, your hands are off the letters a little bit. Um, oh, sorry, Obi. Yeah, don't drink if you're, you know, you've got problems with that. Uh, I also put these things in lemonade. So when you make a fresh lemonade or a limeade, oh my gosh, throw some fruit in there. If you have some strawberries or, bear, you know, any kind of berries um, or pineapple, apples, Mm, I haven't tried it with banana. Wonder how that would be. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna grab my coffee and we're gonna get started. Ooh, oh, wait, hold on. Looks like, did my husband make me some? Uh -huh. Maybe he did. Oh, it's delicious. Oh, I like to put honey in my coffee. Oh, another good habit, right? So. A friend of mine taught me, or she was making herself a cup of coffee at her house one day, and she put honey in it. And I thought, what? You know, I've never seen that before. And ever since then, that's how I sweeten my coffee. It's delicious. Hmm. All right, you guys. There's been a lot of in activity over here. We're going to get started. Okay, Oscar, say hello to everybody. And now goodbye. <laughs> or kind of goodbye. Maybe we'll send him along over there um, to watch. So what I do usually is I put oil in the pan, but since I have bacon grease uh -huh, from this week, I'm gonna use bacon grease. So this is my bacon grease I've been saving through the week. I've been cooking a lot of bacon, but actually it was also that the bacon I had happened to be very fatty. So we just have all this bacon grease. So I'm gonna line my pan with bacon grease and the pan is not on, as you can tell, it's just cold. And you don't want it on just yet. So if you have, don't have bacon grease, <coughs> oil, <coughs> excuse me, oil will do. And I used to use, um, let me see, olive oil, but found out that olive oil doesn't take high heat very well. And I guess, I don't know if it's unhealthy for you or it changes the composition in some way, that's just not great for you. So I don't use olive oil to cook with anymore. Just decided, no, I, you know, I don't want to do that. Um, but I do use avocado oil, which is great. Okay, I'm going to put that back. And I start no matter how small the project, I always start with a sharp knife. And I love this little gadget here, which was like three or four bucks. I can't even remember. Maybe may have even been two dollars to something, $2.99 when I first bought it. But um, it has lasted me, oh my gosh, how long? 10 years? <laughs> and it's still going strong. All right. Here we go. And, uh, wet the knife, wet the sharpener. And then just slide it across a few times. Here, I'll show you. I was doing it over the sink, but yep, just slide it across a few times. There's a fine and a coarse side. So the coarse side I use when I slide it across and I don't feel any resistance at all. And it just kind of slips right by. What I'll do is I'll use the coarse side three or four times and then slide it I can hear this little scraping with the fine side now, so I'm not going to use the coarse. The coarse side is also good when there are nicks or little um, dents in your blade for some reason. You're going to want to use the coarse side to kind of straighten that out a little bit and flatten it out a little bit before you use the fine side. So that's how you use a sharpener. I, I just keep going. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. This is so good. Well, today I wanted to talk about, um, oh, I forgot a little trash thing. Hold on. I need my little compost container. I use a tiny one because I just prefer to dump my compost. Oh, a leaf fell down. Um, 
dump my compost uh, pretty much with every meal. I don't keep it around on my counter for days. See how I just cut it in half. People can do it in quarters. And then I stick it right onto the pan. So that's what I will be doing. And a tiny one like that, well, I'm still gonna put them, <laughs> put them in half, put them in the pan. All right, ah, okay, with the cut side down. Oh, and I love these little leaves. Save the little leaves. We're gonna sprinkle that on top at the end because the little leaves don't take as long to cook. Yeah, so today I'm talking about when do you know when a narcissist is telling the truth? Um, and that actually came from a different topic or similar actually that came to mind because I was watching this crime show <laughs> as I usually do. And this one was called like confessions, right? Of a killer or murderer or something like that. I can't remember. Police confessions, I don't remember. But it's when the detectives get the... Um, the person of interest, right, into the, the interrogation room and they start questioning them or, you know, and sometimes they're just talking to them. It's not even someone of interest, but man, they start spilling stuff and saying things that raise some red flags for the detectives. And then they, they become a person of interest. But there is this one guy, I was watching this show. It was, a oh, what was his name? I don't even care. You know, I don't care for these horrible serial uh, murderers to become famous and everybody knows them and uh, I don't really care. They're not worth me remembering their names. So anyway, it's this guy. He um, killed, gosh, I, at least 48 women that they know of, that they know of, right? And um, I think this is back in the... 80s. It was back in the 80s, and it seemed to be like one or two every week for a while, and they could not catch him. Couldn't just could not catch him. And I can't remember, but I think it was wasn't until holy cow, something like 15 years later that they finally DNA caught up enough that they were able to finally identify him. So they have him in the interrogation room. They know it's him, you know. They had um, questioned him before. Oh, by the way, you guys, these gloves are so hilarious because they're tiny. I bought small because usually my hands are small, but they're beyond small. They're extra small, so I feel like my fingers are kind of nubby in this. So, But they're great for gripping. They grip really wonderfully. Um, and until my other gloves come in, this is what I'm going to be using. Maybe I'll just keep using these. I don't know. These are great. So this guy, he's, they had interviewed him before and he passed the lie detector. Flying colors totally passed the, the lie detector. So they didn't have anything that could warrant their holding him um, in custody. They had to let him go. They had nothing else on him. They didn't, you know, DNA was not there. Uh, I mean, they had his fluids and stuff like that, right? But they just did, the DNA was not good enough in the 80s for them to pin down this guy. So they let him go. And it wasn't until 15 years later or so that the DNA caught up and they caught him. So he's in the, the room. And first of all, let me talk about that. He passed the lie detector with, you know, nope, with these, with no problems whatsoever. And that kind of gets you thinking, you know, narcissists lie so well. I mean, they live in this fantasy world of theirs. They convince themselves of what their reality is, right? Their reality is not reality. It's their version of what's going on in the world and their life and their um, narrative. So they can convince themselves to the point where, yeah, you know, this is to them reality, whatever it is. I told you guys this before, um, a viewer had written in and asked, you know, saying that her ex-narcissist has all this dirt on her, knows so much about her, you know, past, and, um, you know, she shared a lot of intimate information with this narcissist, and she was so afraid that he was going to share her information with others, 
And here's the deal. You cannot stop a narcissist from revealing all your secrets and whatnot, you know, your int intimate information. Um, and in fact, they love to complain about um, if it's your body parts, you know, they will talk about that with other people. Uh, but here's the other deal. They'll also make up stuff about you. And it's not, it's not a matter of they might make up stuff about you. They will make up stuff about you. They're going to lie about you. They're going to exaggerate about you. Whatever is wrong with you, whatever your flaws are, they're going to um, make the story about it beyond, uh, be far, far beyond reality and far beyond the truth. So here's my advice is you can't stop it. And, and here's the deal. They're going to lie about you anyway. Even if they don't have any dirt whatsoever on you, they're going to make it up anyway. They're going to um, lie to people to let other people know why they hate you now, right? And they have to make it up if you're a pretty decent person and you didn't do anything to them, you know? Um, there are lots of people who are really wonderful, decent people who are taken advantage of by the narcissist. Uh, but the narcissist will treat them terribly. And then the one day that person stands up for themselves and says, hey, you know, um, and pushes them away. Not even like hitting them, but just, you know, like, hey, put their hands out to say, stop. You're entering my personal space. You're getting too close to me. You need to back off. When you do that, guess what their version of that's going to be? It's going to be that you shove them into the wall. You try to knock them down. You are the violent one, you know, it's not, their version is not ever going to be, um, uh, what is it, put you in the light of favor, okay? <laughs> it's not going to do that. So don't worry, don't worry that they know a lot of junk about you because they're gonna make up junk on top of that anyway. And the people, you can't force people to believe or not believe and you can try to come out and tell people, you know, what's true and what's not, but people are going to make up their minds anyway, you know? It's the thing that shocks me is I'm watching different things happen happening around me. And even when someone's confronted with actual facts and actual um, evidence, if they are so deluded in a particular train of thought, they're not going to even believe fact they're not going to believe evidence they are going to believe what they decided in their heads was actually happening so you can't you can't make people believe anything even if you give them evidence right they'll just twist it in some way and say well i still don't have the full story so i don't know you know it's just insane so don't fret about it don't worry there's nothing you just got to let it go and you know, your past or your history with the narcissist may come back from time to time, but so what, you know, just let it be. And people are gonna talk and narcissists are going to gossip. So just try to shut that door and then walk away. That's all you can do. Just keep walking away and uh, stay away from their world and their, their circles of influence, just stay away from it you don't need to make the same friends that they're making. All right, you guys. So this guy, I wanted to talk more about this horrible serial killer. He, um, they have him in the interrogation room. And, <laughs> oh yeah, they made a deal with him. They would take off, they would take the death sentence off the table if he would lead them to the remains of, I think they had maybe 10 other, uh, like nine to 10 other women that had gone missing and they, they don't, they never found them. And he said, yeah, he'll lead them to the other, these women and so that they'll, you know, in their agreement and uh, he wouldn't have to go, um, well, I don't know what mode they would have used back then, or it was in the early, 2000s, I think it was 2003 or something like that when they caught up with him. But um, 
so he could avoid the death sentence. So for, I want to say it was four to five months, months, you guys, he took them out on dozens of field trips. They call them field trips to all these places that he insisted this is where he dumped the bodies or buried them or discarded them. And they would go and they would dig and they'd spend all day, you know, rummaging through the forest and the um, weeds and the, you know, uh, shoveling dirt and to find nothing, nothing for four months. So for weeks and weeks, they kept going up. Look at, isn't this great? So it covers my big old pan. Now I'm gonna, oh, I gotta move this because the burner that's under here is not as big. I like to use the burner that's under there. And here's another thing I do. I love garlic. And I've talked about this before. Use garlic and onions in your cooking and you're gonna most likely um, stay far healthier than people who don't cook with onions and garlic. And I feel sorry for people almost who don't cook with onions and garlic. And I know they don't like the taste of it for some reason. I would say, you know what, roast it, get to, get to find a way that you would like it. Maybe they had it when someone overcooked or burned the garlic. You can see that it's kind of getting out of control here. I should really plant that. Maybe I will, let me see. <laughs> Maybe I'll find some other ones that are, nope, this one's also, you know what, I am going to plant some of these, because look at that, that's cool. Yeah, okay, I might just plant that guy. Yeah, why not? And um, so I have a garden going here in my house, since the uh, stay home orders and all that's happening. Um, I've started, I don't know, maybe getting a little bit bored about my usual, uh, um, day or whatever, you know, my schedule, which is not as f fulfilling as it's been before. I don't get to go out as much, but I still make it, you know, make the trek outside to wander um, with my dogs, which is so nice because you got to get outside. But I started putting um, things in dirt because I have some flower pots in my house and I, that have plants in it. But because there's extra dirt on the sides of my plants, I just stuff things like this into the dirt and they start growing. That's awesome. All right, I'm gonna probably save some of these too. Maybe this guy, let's see what this guy looks like. Yeah, look at that. Kind of peel off the skin, whatever that's called. I'm gonna plant these three. Or maybe this guy, because look at how green that guy is already. Yeah, I'm gonna plant this guy. So yeah, so for all these months, the detectives are talking to him. They have male, female, they've they switched up all kinds of tactics to talk to him, to try to get him to tell the truth, right? And they know, they know he's freaking playing with them. They know, you know, and they're just so frustrated. So they're at the point where they're like, okay, we, their task force is getting dwindled down because um, whoever is it, the mayor, I don't remember who's in charge of the budget there for the police, but decides that, you know, we're spending way too much money on this guy and pulling people off of him, detectives off of this case. And um, we're going to have to shut this down. You know, they're, so they come to him and they're like, look, buddy, if you don't tell us the truth, uh, the death penalty is back on the board, back on the table. You know, we're, <laughs> you're going to suffer this because, um, and even with that, he wouldn't, he wouldn't tell him the truth. You know, I kept, oh yeah, okay. Now, okay, now I'll tell you really. I, I understand, I get it, you know? And week after week after week of this. And then they get this um, uh, psycho, psychologist or clinical, oh, therapist. I can't remember what she was, but she did criminal um, uh, psychology was her specialty. And they were asking her, why in the world is this guy lying to us so much? We don't understand. And she said, well, sociopaths and psychopaths, they're pathological liars. This is, this is what they do. They just automatically go to lie. There's no, you know, um, why do they do this and all that? Yeah, you can try to figure all of that out, but just that's part of their character. They simply lie. 
And then she also told them that part of it is um, that it's just a, their nature, it's their character to lie. And they use lies and information and words to manipulate. So what he was doing with the detectives was he was watching them and observing them as he tells them his lies and taking them out on these field trips, I guess. Um, that's what they do. All right, I'm gonna use, because I like these bulbs. I don't wanna use, but these look so good. All right, I'm gonna use this garlic, I guess. Okay, I'm just gonna stick two in my garden. Ooh, where am I gonna, I have so many. Um, oh, nope. All right, I'm just gonna have to find a different spot to put them. And in the meantime, I might just stick them in a bowl of water for now. There you go. Oh, they're kind of rolling. Ah. Yeah. Ah, there you go. Okay. So I got them in a bowl of water with the stem side, the root side pointed down. Now I'm going to do this. Yeah, so she's explaining to the detectives that, you know, narcissism, well, she says um, sociopaths or psychopaths are pathological liars. And here's the reason I even bring it up when we're talking about narcissists. Because for a very long time, as I'm watching these crime shows, I see the behaviors of these killers as very narcissistic. You can see it. They're very ego egocentric. They are, they cannot, they have no empathy. They, um, they think that only they matter. Like they're the center of their world and of the world and nobody else matters. It's their opinion of everybody else and their value. I'm going to crush um, whatever value they place on people. That's the value those people have. It's not that, you know, and people just don't have value. They have, they're useful. They have usefulness to the narcissist. So, and to the psychopath. So, the, you know, when I look, my question about narcissists is what makes them or turns them into a psychopath? Or, or where's the line between a, nar a narcissist and, um, and a psychopath or a sociopath? What is the line, right? And yeah, there are some differences um, as far as between a sociopath and a psychopath, I guess. Some people say that a sociopath is made and a psychopath is born. But then they also say narcissists are born. But then some people say it's also learned um, narcissism. I think that the learned narcissistic traits um, can be changed. I don't know that uh, the ones that are born narcissists can be changed. So anyway, I, I, there, I don't know. What, where is the... Uh-oh. Did I? Okay, no, I didn't. I was thinking I put all the stems in there, but I think I left I cut off the stems. All right, so kind of a coarse chop on the garlic. Oh, and by the way, when I cut garlic, I rinse my knife. I'm gonna do that again. Because I like to use um, a wet knife with garlic because it'll stick, it'll stick to everything. So I don't mind having my hands wet as well. All right, so we're gonna switch this over. So here's the deal. I'm watching this show and it occurs to me, okay, Narcissists are pathological liars. And if that's true, wh when do they tell the truth? You know, because you know they do also. There are times because the, there are moments that you can see this guy uh, being interviewed by the psychologist um, tell her the truth. And she has awesome, awesome techniques, strategies to when she talks to people that she knows are guilty of certain things and she knows enough about them that she can profile them and have an idea of what causes some of their um, psychopathy, right? So she asks him questions, not, did you ever do this? She would ask them, when did you do this? <laughs> so taking off the plate, you know, they're, them having to lie to her about whether they've ever done whatever it is or not they would then tell her when. And even if the when is not accurate, it doesn't matter. It, go, it shows her that it did happen 
and this is the kind of thing. And they may even talk about how often it happened or how often they did the thing. Okay, so I got the fire on high. And she'll have an idea of how, and when they talk about that, those incidents of what is motivating them and what's going on inside of them. And it's also kind of a connection, if you will, that she makes with them to kind of open the door to get them to talk about other things. But she also points out that nurse, uh, psychopaths will use their children. They, ha they don't form bonds with other people. This guy was married and had kids all those years. And throughout the time that he was um, murdering these women, uh, he says one time he brought his son and that's how he lured the, the woman into his car because she thought it was safe. He's got a little boy in the car with him. Um, and the, the therapist, psychologist says, yeah, you know, psychopaths, they use their own kids. They have no loyalty or bond to anybody, not even their own children. They will use people. So it gets me thinking again, you know, this is also like narcissists. Not all narcissists are psychopaths or sociopaths, but where's the line? When does this happen? What? And, and actually, maybe the answer is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where the line is because whether they're just a narcissist and not a psychopath, do you really want to be with somebody who's capable of the same character, I don't know, and the same behavior as a psychopath? No, you don't. So if you're out of a relationship and you're mourning it and you're you know, reminiscing about the good times, just remember that you are lucky. You are lucky to have gotten out of there. All right, you guys. So when do you know that a narcissist is telling the truth? Because there are moments that you know this guy is telling the truth. Um, you know, when he talked about the abuse that happened when he was younger with his mom. And it was sort of like weird sexual shaming. Um, and that, ah, I don't even want to get into it. It's so disgusting and gross and all of it. But, um... It wasn't to the degree where he should have become this murderer, though. You know, I'm just letting you know that. Uh, in his mind, he just d defined things a certain way, and he decided from those experiences who's valuable, or actually nobody's valuable, and that um, he's going to act out on all these people. Oh, okay, so I'm doing this, and while this is, you can hear it sizzling, I'm going to add a little bit of salt, and I like to use um, pink Himalayan salt. Let me see. Yeah, sprinkle a little bit of that on. Um, and a little bit of pepper. And as you can see, I did not put the garlic on yet, and I add oil to this because I do like it to have a little bit more um, fluid than this. I didn't put the garlic yet because garlic tends to cook fast and then burn. And you don't want that. I'm going to turn this down to medium high. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see how this is going. See? Nope. You can tell that the, it hasn't browned yet. I like to cook it until it's browned. And it's so nice. I'm going to turn the pan a bit because I don't know about your stove, but mine has hot spots. And uh, sometimes one section will get real hot and the other section... I don't know, still keeps the, you know, one side will brown the food and the other side won't. Anyway, so that, I'm going to turn the pan a bit. Yeah, so it got me thinking, when do narcissists tell the truth? And <laughs> thinking back to the times that I've dealt with the narcissists in my life, I remember, you know what, narcissists tell the truth or some version of it. You may not ever get the full version of the truth. But when they talk about, um, uh, and it so depends because it, 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 they can also be full out lying about any of these topics. So there's not like one topic where it's like, yes, they tell the truth about that. They might one day, but then lie about it the next. Um, one of the things that I had seen, it was kind of comical, is that one narcissist would brag about his um, body part <laughs> and how big it was. So, you know, 
the funny thing is he wanted so bad to tell people about it, but he knew it wasn't socially acceptable. Um, but that's what, you know, it's, uh, so when they're bragging about something, um, another thing is how much money they make. They will also brag about that. So they want people to know, and they may go to the upper, you know, tier or whatever, upper edge of the, the actual salary. Okay, Ooh, I'm gonna turn it down, check this out. All right, I'm gonna start flipping these around. See that? Oh yeah. Well, maybe I, yeah, I think I will add a little oil. Although it looks kind of nice with the bacon grease, doesn't it? I didn't put a, you know, a ton of bacon grease up in there, as you saw. I'm going to add a little oil. There we go. Just for good measure. Why not? All right. So, yeah, they'll brag about how much they make. And the thing is, they, they reveal the truth about things that are socially unacceptable. <laughs> I did notice that. I was like, you know what? Yes, they do. The truth that they talk about or that they reveal is the socially unacceptable crap. You know? Like they'll brag about their sexual conquest. They'll um, tell, you know, talk about how incredible they are in bed. And maybe they are, you know, they probably... They probably are because <laughs> narcissists tend to let go and not be encumbered by our, you know, like the same things that encumber us. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of garlic. Oh, all that garlic, actually, right? It's going to be awesome. I'm turning down the heat to like medium now, medium to medium low, or probably just medium slightly below medium and um we're just gonna let it the seasoning cook in the garlic also and i turned it down because i don't want the garlic to burn and here's the thing i really like to use and i want to you don't have to but you can but i like to use it it's this bouillon from it's pronounced canor i used to think it's just nor but apparently they pronounce the k so i think it's like swedish or something something Anyway, um, I use the powdered kind, but I also have cubes on hand. I, they, it used to be that they only sold it in boxes and cubes, and the cubes are, let me see. With this amount, I would tell you I could use, I might use a, almost a whole cube of this, right? Maybe three quarters of this, maybe half, depending on how salty you like it. And, I like using the powder because I don't have to break up the cube. I'm going to get a spoon. So, yeah, you know, <laughs> it occurred to me that they like to brag about this. You know, and I've had the ones that are successful will actually tell you how much they make. Like, they, they've got to squeeze it into conversation somehow because they've got to let you know how impressive they are. And... Um, but like I said, there are some that are not successful. They're not impressive, but they're going to lie about it because they want you to be impressed and think more of them than they really are. So they will lie about these things as well to make themselves look better. But they're the ones that are doing well, they will tell you exactly how much they make because they want to, you to know that they beat you. They want you to know how much their house is worth. And you can look it up and you'll be like, holy cow, he's right, you know, or she's right. That is how much their house is worth or how much they paid for a car because they want to brag. They want you to know that they're successful. So that's when you know <laughs> a narcissist is telling a tr the truth. There's another time that you know a narcissist is telling the truth, although they deny it, okay? They're denying it. And what it is... Um, when it happens, it's when they're projecting. They're, when they're projecting onto you and telling you all the things about them. You know, actually, they're not telling you about them. At least they don't think they're telling you about them. 
they're telling you all the things they hate about you, right? They're spewing all this criticism at you. And you're sitting there thinking, uh, it sounds like you're describing yourself. Like, <laughs> these are things you do. What? what? <laughs> you know, they'll tell you you're defensive. They'll tell you you're... Um, Oh, what is it? You're, you're paranoid. You know, they'll tell you you don't trust people, you know, um, because they're trying to manipulate you. They're trying to make you feel bad about you. But what's really happening is they're telling on themselves. This is them. Uh, another time. Hold on, you guys. I'm going to add a little bit of water to this because I don't want the um, garlic to burn. There we go. Just a tiny bit. And I think I'm just about done. Yeah. And that also allows the um, the bouillon to to get inside the little crevices of the... Um... Oh, I didn't throw my leaves in. Let me do that. Woohoo! Yeah. And those will cook on up real easy and fast. And that's about it, you guys. I just, you know, put this aside, let it stay warm a little bit on the pan, cook the rest of the way. Uh, another time that a narcissist is telling you the truth. Uh, yeah, I lost my train of thought, you guys. Hold on. So when they're bragging and when they're projecting, uh, they'll they'll oh they'll tell you you know they're they're accusing you. When they're accusing you, know that it's a lot of the things about them, right? If they're like, uh, I just don't think you're trustworthy. <laughs> That's telling you they're not trustworthy, okay? And you're like, and it's out of left field because you know you didn't do anything to deserve that. You know you didn't cheat on them. You know you're you're being honest. You know you're an honest person. You you know yourself. Um, and they come at you and they say these things about you. I, I just think that you're the kind of person um, who can't have just one partner. Okay, they're telling about themselves. That's when you know. Um, okay, another time that they're telling you the truth about them is when is when they're complaining about other people, right? When they're telling you about this jerk in their life or this person in their life who, and they talk constantly and they badmouth everybody, right? And they're very critical. They're just very critical people because everybody to them is not as good as they are. So when they complain about other people and the traits that other people have that they can't stand, they're telling you about them. <laughs> it's part of projection again, right? But, and they can't, they can't stand themselves, but they can't say that. And they, they don't want to live with not liking themselves. So it's better for them to project onto somebody else these characteristics and say, I don't like it about him. And that's why I don't like him or her. And that's my beef with them. Um, I don't like them because they're lazy. You know, I don't like them because uh, they're ignorant. I don't like them because um, they're too fast to judge. And whatever it is. I don't like them because they, they're greedy. You know, they look like they're greedy to me. Whatever the trait is that they're telling you, about that other person the funny thing is a lot of times you'll sit there and you'll go um in your head you don't say it to them you're thinking holy cow it sounds like you're describing yourself you know you do all these things money is a big deal to you uh, you know they'll tell you that they don't like vanity that you know they'll talk as if i don't care about how i look but i'm you know i can't stand people who just stare in the mirror all the time and yet you see them staring in the mirror <laughs> You see them with gobs of makeup on. You see them always so proud to show off their new style or whatever it is. And and it's okay to show off your style. I'm not saying that everybody who does this is a narcissist. But when you know someone is a narcissist, you know that they're projecting. And when you want to know when they're telling you the truth, it's when they're projecting. But it's the truth about them. It's not the truth about whoever they're projecting on. Um, and... Also, when they brag about socially unacceptable things to talk about, <laughs> like how good they are in bed, you know, in a very, in a family setting at the dinner table for crying out loud, right? They'll say it then. Um, 
just in really weird times because they can't they can't contain what they want you to know about them. All right, you guys, so sorry. I have not been keeping up with comments. Yeah, Mike says, narcissists will twist everything we say and do. And that's, you know, at the beginning when I was telling you guys about, you know, a viewer who was so concerned that, that she had exposed, you know, her secrets and private information to the narcissist. And now that the, they're not together, he's going to share it with other, other people. And he probably will. But he'll also exaggerate and twist it, like Mike's saying. Um, Mike says, they also don't pr practice what they preach. All I ever, um, oh wait, that's the part that I did not understand. Okay. <laughs> okay, Linnea, good to see you. He says, I'm so down into this narcs people around. I want to be free. Oh, um, and talk to a therapist. It's helping to be here. And now what's the humor with narcs? Oh, to be here now. Okay. Yeah. I laugh at narcissists or about narcissists because it's just mind boggling, you know, how they live their life and what they do. All right. I think I'm done with this. I'm going to just let it set and that's it. So the beautiful thing about this is, um, it's nice and savory, it's tasty, it's healthy, it's got good oils and fats, it's got um, uh, vegetables that are not, not cooked to death, so there's still nutrients that haven't been cooked out of the vegetable, and there's a tiny bit of a crunch, uh, it's so, so good, I'm going to have a little bite, let me see, maybe I'll grab this little guy here, nope, I'm going to, oh, here he comes, all right, wow. Oh. That's perfect. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, that's delicious. All right, I'm going to put that in a bowl. But not this one. I'm going to put it in this bowl. I don't like to put safety stuff in plastic bowls because it might leach into the bowl. And when you're having something sweet in that bowl, it's, not gonna, it's going to taste off. I don't know. That's just my thinking. So... Yeah, just wanted to share with you guys today because, you know, be careful with narcissists because they are pathological liars. They lie to you and then they observe you. They observe to see if they are touching a particular cord with you and they want to know how to manipulate you better. And that's why they do what they do. This, this guy, this horrible monster of a, an animal, um, that was killing these women back in the 80s. Um, he, he, you know, they asked him, the, the, ther the psychologist asked him, how did you gain these women's trust to get into your car? Because they were all, I believe, prostitutes. Um, and some of them were like brand new prostitutes. You know, they're just young. I think the youngest one was 15. I don't remember, 15 or 16. It's very sad. Um, but... She asked him, how did you manipulate these women? How did you convince them to get into your car and know and th think that they were safe? And he would say, think, you know, so he knew, he understood people. He knew what made people feel safe. And like when he would keep his, you know, brought his son along, he said he only did it once. I'm not sure if he only did it once, but he did admit to that. He never, he didn't volunteer the information. Uh, she had to ask, I forget how she asked him, but in a way that kind of made him tell her how often he did it. He said he only did it once, but you see, they'll use children to, to, um, as bait to get you. Now he also would, uh, flash his, you know, some of the prostitutes would ask for ID. Sorry, I have an itchy nose. Some of the prostitutes would ask for ID. And he would show his ID um, from where he worked. So I think he worked in some medical facility. So he had a medical uh, or an ID from that medical facility. And 
they thought he was like a doctor or something like that, right? A physician or someone in the medical field. So they trusted him. Now, I don't know, will I use that pan? No, I'm gonna use a different pan. And you guys are gonna be like, what? But I'm going, guess what? Brussels sprouts are not just for dinner. I like them for breakfast as well. I'm gonna have them as a side to some eggs that I am gonna make for my husband. So, and yeah, it's not funny. In the in the, my description for this uh, today's show, I mentioned that my husband hated Brussels sprouts. He could not stand Brussels sprouts um, as a kid. And when I told him one day I was gonna make them for him, he was like, "Oh no, you know, how's he gonna tell me that he doesn't like my cooking?" But it wouldn't be my cooking; it would be the Brussels sprouts. You know, he just couldn't stand them. He was just not happy about my cooking Brussels sprouts. But then I cooked them like this and now he loves them. He eats them like this all the time. And we can munch on them like as a snack. It's awesome. I used the bacon grease and I'm gonna get my eggs. I'm gonna turn this down to medium high. So, yeah. I do wanna see what you guys are saying. So let me get these eggs started. Oh, another thing I do for this, for eggs. It's, I like to add butter. Aha, I love to add butter. Butter helps them not stick, even to a non-stick pan. <laughs> Sometimes eggs will stick, even on a non-stick pan. Um, and generally it's because the heat's too high. If the heat's on medium, well it's on medium high right now, uh, it won't stick, or less likely to stick, I guess. There we go. Oh, the egg's kind of cracking apart badly. <laughs> there we go. Ah, okay, so I got an eggshell in there. And although this is big, uh, when they're tiny, what's a good way to get an eggshell is, ooh, yeah, actually, there it is. It's stuck to the egg right there. Is you use the eggshell to get the eggshell out. <laughs> All right. See how slippery and slidey that is? It is not always slippery and slidey. If you don't want it slippery and slidey, which you probably shouldn't have, um, don't add the butter. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna make my, my husband some eggs with a side of Brussels sprouts. A little bit of, because you know what, you guys, you got to be so careful not to have such a high acidic uh, diet um, and to lower the acidity in your body. Eat vegetables, right? Fresh vegetables, uh, not overcooked vegetables. Okay. And so a diet of just bacon and eggs all the time is, I love bacon and eggs, but you want to add a vegetable in there somehow. <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna see what you guys are saying. Okay, uh, Obi says, Narc has been wasting court's time and the courts kept postponing our trial because I was too slow to know what my Narc was doing and she was extremely mad. Huh, Mike says, mine still stalks me every day. Doesn't matter what time I come out, she's always out, never fails. Oh. Obi says, then the judge said, this will be our last hearing. Either you catch on or you don't. To you or to the narc? I, I don't understand. Uh, oh, Obi says, I was about to give up and dig deeper and dug deeper and realize someone owes me thousands and I got my freedom back. And now the end is coming, but I feel fine. Oh, that's good. That's good. Hey, Jihad. Good to see you. Yeah, it says, Obi, I hope you finish all that mess soon. Light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Yeah, Obi says, I get that G.I. Joe term. Excuse me. I have a... I can blow my nose, actually. <laughs> ah. 
It's getting to be um, allergy season. <laughs> Alright, those eggs are looking good. I'm going to flip them. I like ours over medium. Uh-oh. Flip, flip. There you go. So that's flipped. I'm move this over here. Move that over here. I'm going to remove the butter. Now I'm going to turn this off because I don't want it to cook all the way down or anything. Remove these things. Uh -huh. I'll put this back in. Oh, it flipped over. Okay. I got to put this little cube guy back in. There you go. Place that up. Yeah, and if you don't want to use Knorr, I just happen to love Knorr, and I don't have any uh, allergies to anything that they use. Um, but if you have your own type of bouillon, use that. All right, you guys. Now the eggs are going on here. And I'm going to give him a scoop of this. Give him a spoon. Oh, you know what? I also like to kind of put the plate... Not on, but right onto the hot grill because it kind of warms up the plate, which is nice. I'm going to do a little side of Brussels sprouts for him. So yummy. I don't know how much he wants, but I'm going to give him that amount. Looks good. Okay, one more. <laughs> okay, so that's what we're going to do for breakfast this morning. Hey, it looks almost like a snack. I'm going to do this. <laughs> Let's see if he notices. I'm gonna make a smile for him. <laughs> he needs something in the nose. Oh, maybe I'll need this. <laughs> there you go. That's what I'm making for my husband. <laughs> you guys see that? Okay. Looks kind of bizarre, but that's what he's getting. Um all right, I'm going to give that to him. I'll be right back, you guys. Well, he laughed. He thought I was pretty funny. <laughs> he liked the face. All right. I'm going to put this maybe here. Yeah. Yeah. Keep that a little bit warm. Yeah. So you guys, I'm going to take a look at some of your more comments. Oh, I was just reading that. He, I don't even know if I finished reading it. That the GI Joe term, knowing is winning half the battle. Knowing is winning half the battle. So, and he says, well, I found out everything and won the battle. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Mike says, uh, yeah, you know, I was talking about how narcissists are delusional and magical thinkers. But Mike says, but we're also the delusional magical thinkers. Yeah, because we fall into the narcissist world. And I have a video that talks about don't, um, oh, I can't, living in the narcissist delusion or something like that. So I'll post it on this video once it uploads. Last week, it took almost 24 hours for the video to upload properly before I could add little links to um, my other videos. So I'm going to add a link to those videos in the little eye circle icon and you guys i know this is quite far into the video but if you guys can watch a commercial or play a commercial let one play through or something like that um that would be so helpful i know that everybody's becoming quite adept at skipping commercials and you're like almost the fastest gun in the west right who can close this commercial as fast as they possibly can 
But for channels like mine, where we barely, I don't really have a bunch of, of viewers. If you could just watch a video or play one or a few, <laughs> that would be so helpful. I would appreciate it. And recommend this channel to others too, because I keep running into people who are like, oh my gosh, my sister is married to a narcissist or my uh, friend here has a narcissist for a boss, you know, or my neighbor, uh, you know, is dealing with this narcissist or, you know, or my, my, or I have a narcissistic ex, you know, they'll, they'll go into all kinds of stuff. And as they watch my channel, they're like, wow, okay, this is really helping them to get over it, come back into reality, get out of that, um, get out of that delusional, magical thinking, right? That the narcissist traps us in because they put us in their world. Can you imagine that guy, you know, that monster that killed all these women, almost 50 women, you guys, 48 women is how many they found. And um, I think there were still six more that they had not found. And who, and they said there were probably even more that they weren't even aware were missing. Because a lot of times, you know, transients, people coming through his town possibly, and people just didn't know uh, who these people were. Um, then all these, while he's doing all this, he's married. He has a wife and he has children. I don't know that he had more than one child. They, um, they talked definitely about a son that he had, but how can they live that life, right? What, how could his wife have been married to him all that time? She's living in his delusional thinking. She's part of his delusional world. She has played a character in his world and has um, adapt, adopt, let me see, not adapted. What am I trying to say? Um, she's adjusted to his world, right? And now she's a, a character in his world, a supporting character in his movie. That's what we become. We become a supporting character. We're not even living our own life in, in reality. We become this bizarre supporting character, even one that we don't want to be, even though the character is not living a wonderful, beautiful life with the narcissist, that person, their supply becomes a supporting character, somebody they can use in some way. And that's their function, that person's function, the supply's function in the narcissist's life. And in this case, it was a, psych a psychopath. But I'm just saying that narcissists do the same thing. You don't ever bond with the narcissist. They... They pretend to bond with you for a moment and you think, oh, nobody will ever love me as much as this person because they tell me how much they love me and they do the love bombing thing, right? They go into how amazing you are, how important you are in their life. They can't live without you. You're everything to them. But then on a dime, they turn and they tell you what a horrible person you are. They can't believe they're married to you. You're the worst thing that's ever happened in their life. You know, so it's, what, what you know so this is their world that they trap their supply in the ones that stay with them till death do they part and i've talked about that before with people who say well he's moved on or she's moved on with a new supply and they seem happy and they're still together two years later or whatever number of years later and my answer to that is it's a horrible existence yes some of them will stay they will, you know, this woman stayed with this mass murderer for crying out loud, right? The serial killer for at least 20 years that we know of. And uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't look, dig into his stupid background because I don't care to get to know these serial killers because they're, they're not worth knowing, horrible people. Um, but I watch these shows because it intrigues me how they manipulate and how they um, how they play people and how they abuse people because I want to know how to prevent that, how to help people see that it's coming, how to feel good about yourself when you leave and know that you escaped. It's not like, oh, I left and now I'm missing them and at least they were a companion even though part of the time they were abusing me. No, you don't have to settle for that. You don't have to settle for that. So, you know, find find your own self-worth. 
and live according to that. You don't have to put up with the, the value the narcissist puts on you. You live with the value that you put on you. And for me, it's the value that I see God has for me because sometimes I don't value myself enough. And so I have to go and believe that there's a God that values me more than I value myself. And once I see it from that perspective, I realize that that I do matter. So anyway, you guys, I don't want to get all preachy with you. <laughs> it's just part of uh, who I am. Uh, <laughs> I'm just reading some of the comments here. Linnea says, had anyone take the 12 step to recover? Um, no, I haven't. But if I were to make up 12 steps, I can tell you. <laughs> the first one is no contact, right? And then no looking. You cannot look at what's going on. Even though you have no contact with the narcissist, you cannot investigate. You can't ask about them from mutual friends or their family. You And when somebody starts talking about them, you leave the room. I mean, you have to monitor. Think of it as the parental control on the TV. <laughs> you have to set a parental control for yourself because you don't want damaging information getting to your eyes or getting to your ears, and getting inside of you, into your psyche. So that's why you cannot look. You don't want to have that infiltrate your mind because you're just going to see that snap sh snapshot of a happy moment that the narcissist is having. And then you imagine their entire day, their entire week, their entire month, year as happy because you're picturing them smiling in that snapshot, the one moment that you saw of their life and or, you know, a few minutes that you saw them socializing with people. That's what you're going to imagine for a year and beyond. So don't keep that. I mean, keep that type of image for yourself. You know, you, that's the crazy thing we do to ourselves is we tend to um, exaggerate how well other people are doing in our minds and then play down how well we're doing in our own life. So that would be step two and why uh, don't look, don't investigate, don't try to find out how they're doing. Just sh shut it off completely because it's all toxic to you. Step three would be, oh, let me think. <laughs> you know what? This is a good question. But I, would, I wouldn't mind doing a, a step thing, a project. But those are two very first things. And those are so hard to do. But step, So step three has to be right after those two things. And it has to be um, something that will support you. Because step one and two are so devastating and so painful that you're going to need a step three, you know, the step to to be able to handle no contact and no looking, no investigating, no, no questioning, you know, to find out what's going on in their life. So you're going to have to start filling your life. You have to start, if, if it's not relationships, because you're gun shy now about getting into relationships, because obviously, you know, that happens to us after narcissistic abuse. We don't want to, we don't know that we can trust people. Start working on something for you that will fill your life, whether it's volunteering at a pet shelter or a homeless shelter, or um, if it's uh, gardening, if it's even volunteering to, to help your elderly neighbors, you know, start doing something for yourself that brings you out of, in your mind, out of being swarmed by thoughts of the narcissist. Stay occupied, but occupied with good things. That would be my step three. Um, step four, it would be really good to, oh gosh, you guys are getting me really in on, maybe I shouldn't say all these things because this is all off the top of my head because I have not thought about this. But I'm just trying to think, you know, step four, take care of yourself. Start getting more rest. Start adding one or two things in your life that are good for you. Like uh, I made a video about um, taking care of yourself, how... Oh, I can't remember how it, what the name of the video is, like how taking making the narcissist jealous is is healthy because you take care of yourself. You start investing in yourself, start eating right, start. Um, you don't have to do a ton of things. Just change one thing at a time, like even if it is making your bed in the morning, every morning. Um, or for me, it was it was one of those things. I did make my bed, start making my bed every morning. Um, but. 
Also drinking water, lots of water every day and just cleansing my body physically and hydrating myself because so often we're dehydrated. You know, it, we don't hear a lot about that, but a lot of times we're dehydrated. So do that. Do, so that would be step four. Start. Um, it doesn't have to be a program, but it has to be a commitment, right? Doing at least one thing for yourself. Um, say maybe getting up in the morning to when the sun starts coming up. That could be something you implement in your life, even though you're not a morning person. I had never been a morning person, but I've become a morning person because I started getting up when the sun get, got, gets up. So I, not, I try not to get up before the sun gets up because it's so depressing and dark. But as the sun's coming up and things are getting light, I love getting up at that time. And it's become a part of me. It, I do it unwittingly now. It's just a habit for me now. When the sun starts coming up, I start waking up and I start my day. It's how I, you know, even though I don't have to get up that early, um, I feel so much better, so much more mentally healthy to do that. So that's number four is implement something that will start making you or improving your life, right? Number five, you know, and at some point you're going to think about, and, and you're, even though you're fighting it, you're going to think about your past. You're going to think about the narcissist. You're going to want to reminisce or um, think about back about either the tragic times or the good times. And it's going to affect your current day mood when you do that. So number five is I would suggest um, therapy. You know, I didn't go to therapy, but I had very good friends and my husband, who is awesome, who was able to listen and help me sort through my mental junk, right? The emotional mental disaster that was left behind. So um, if you're not married to a wonderful person, get a therapist, you know, find someone who can help you work through and find one that has experience with narcissistic abuse. Find someone who understands narcissism, okay? So they can identify for you some of the trappings that maybe you didn't notice or you're not um, aware of that you're falling into still, right? Some of the manipulation you're still uh, a victim of. So that, was that number five? Okay, yeah, finding someone, a therapist, or someone who can help you uh, get through this very hard time of, of figuring out what happened in the past, because you're going to go back into the past. Uh, number six is going to be further, you know, like more of that really, but on your own, start implementing positive images in your head as you go through the past. Start um, when you are angry at yourself and ashamed of yourself, or you feel like disgusted with yourself for maybe things you did while you were with the narcissist or the fact that you fell for the narcissist's ploys, you know, and you... So you got to start building up your self-esteem. You got to start seeing yourself, number six, as someone other um, than yourself. Like imagine your friend going through what you went through. Would you tell your friend, yeah, you know what? You were a jerk and you are a terrible person and there is no hope for you. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't tell your friend that. So if you wouldn't tell your friend that, don't tell yourself that. So that would be my number six is when you go back and you review your back history, picture it, you know, as a movie, but the main characters are not just the narcissist and you, the main characters, imagine it's the narcissist and someone you love, right? Outside of you. Is it a child that you love? Is it a parent that you love? Is it a friend that you love? Put your friend in the role that you played and imagine how you would feel towards that friend if you knew your friend went through what you did, right? So start treating yourself like your friend, like someone you love. Start treating yourself the way you would treat someone you care about. Um, that would be my number six. Anyway, you guys, that is as far as I'm gonna go with a step pro a process. And seven, watch videos like this, you know, uh, get onto these channels, learn about narcissistic abuse, learn about what, deceit they live in and what lies you were caught up in. Um, there's so many videos that I have. There's one that I made that's called, um, oh, let me see. Something like when you turn down a narcissist, you know, what happens? They're going to guilt you. You know, the guilt trip comes on 
And you don't even realize that's what you just came out of. And you're kind of still susceptible to that when people are manipulating you and they try to make you feel bad for not doing what they want you to do. You may be susceptible to that if you had been in a narcissistically abuse or a narcissist. How do you say that? <laughs> yeah, an abusive situation with a narcissist. So you're going to become more easily manipulated. Uh, and you have to learn where those triggers are and when you start feeling guilty and feeling bad about yourself and oh yeah I should have done that I shouldn't have done this you know what kick out all the should haves don't use should haves maybe that's number seven don't use the should haves in your that word in your vocabulary anymore about your life or about yourself like don't say should have just say I'm going to so whenever you're tempted to say I should have done this say I'm going to do that so Seven steps right there for you. <clears throat> so um, actually seventh one was watching videos like this to learn about narcissism. And maybe the eighth is get rid of should have. Yeah. Metal Gear, good to see you, said um, narcissistic people are users and abusers. So true escape. Yep. And good to see you, Metal Gear. Glad to see you here. Yeah. Oh no, Obi, what the heck? That's so gross. Uh, oh yeah, yep. Mike says, my narc neighbors and site manager claim to be rich, but yet they go and steal from me. I know, isn't that crazy? Yeah, Lin Linnea says, I will try to tell my doctor my dad is a narcissist. I doubt they will believe me. And here's the deal, Linnea. This is why you need to find a therapist who has had experience with narcissism, narcissistic abuse. They'll be able to help. But here's the deal. They, it's not really their job to believe everything that you tell them. And yeah, everything you tell them can be absolutely 100% accurate. But the point is that they want you to be able to move forward. So that's their job is to help you to heal from it and then move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Metal Gear says you can never tell if a narcissistic person actually tells the truth. Always shady. No, there. This is why you have to be the detective, right? And I love these detective shows because oh my gosh, the detectives are amazing. It's just incredible to me how they're able to see through a lot of BS. <laughs> And they kind of teach you through this, like, you know, and you're like, wow, how do they know to question this? How do they know this person is not telling the truth or so convincing? And yet, and the de detectives will tell you too, like, why? why? What their thinking is, you know, why are they feeling that this person is not telling the truth? And they'll talk about um, body language, behavior, and not that everybody acts the same way, but, you know, there's certain things that kind of give away the person. <laughs> Funky Friday, good to see you. Says, hmm, that smells good. <laughs> it actually does. Yeah, Obi says, these channels help me quite, help me quit feeling sorry for myself. Yes, and these channels help me understand what I was dealing with. It took about a few years to heal from a 14-year problem. Therapists couldn't help. And, you know, and that's why if they don't have any any experience with um, narcissistic abuse? Um, I still think some therapists, if they're good, they will be able to help you. Um, but some of them, they're just over their heads. They don't, they don't understand. And maybe they just need more experience. I don't know. But that's what I've heard a lot of. And for myself, uh, these channels definitely have helped me. My husband has helped me. Learning about narcissistic abuse from people who've gone through narcissistic abuse. And then being able to identify with them, you know, say, oh, my gosh, that happened to me, too. You know, I did go through that. And then you realize you're not the crazy one. It's, you know, these crazy people, these horrible people in our lives that come in and out or whatever. And sometimes they stay forever and you want to put up some borders <laughs> and keep them out. But when you hear stories from other people, what they went through, that was so healing for me to hear other people talk about the crazy town that they lived in. And you're like, wow, 
Were we living in the same freaking crazy town? <laughs> yeah. And it, it's kind of comical. And, and it makes you feel like, okay, at least I wasn't alone. And, you know, if you made it out, then I'm going to make it out. Yeah. It's very, it's great. Yeah. Well, you guys, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your, um, I appreciate your being here. I appreciate you uh, coming on and chatting with me and uh, contributing. I love it. Yeah, Funky Friday says, yes, eat lots of. And he, Funky Friday put up pictures of fruits. And are there any vegetables? Mostly fruits. Fruits are delicious, by the way. So good. So good. And in case you missed it earlier, yeah, I made this. <laughs> I made this. Uh, pineapple infused vodka and I would probably I mean you can try it at any time but in my past experience a week or two is not enough to actually get the really delicious pineapple flavor in the alcohol we found one in our fridge that I had made back in uh, December and um, my husband poured it and it tasted like pineapple sweet pineapple it was so delicious so I made another one uh, yesterday so anyway, you guys, blessings to you. I hope you have a great day and take care of yourself. Stay connected here. I love to see your comments in uh, the comment section. I do try to get to the comments. It's harder for me to find them in the older videos. So if you come on to the newer videos, I tend to see those comments. And for some reason, YouTube does not always alert me when I have comments coming in. That's why it's hard for me to go back to my 150 videos and find uh, people's comments. Although there are some times I'll, you know, browse through the comments of um, some of the past videos just to try to answer some questions and um, stay connected to you guys. So blessings to you. Respond with a comment down below um, about what's going on in your life. I do respond back. I do look at that within a week and um, we can definitely stay connected when I'm not on. So blessings to you and I will see you next week.